Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN. This is Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. So one of our most common questions is, hey, I've got this wireless network. Can you come out here and tell me why it doesn't work? Well, in a nutshell, no, I can't. I mean, we could troubleshoot a bunch of things, but um, basically there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen in a proper sequence for your wireless network to work and work well. Um, We'll go through some of the more common problems that people experience here. Well, hopefully uh, one of these things will resolve your issue if you are right now having a wireless connectivity problem. Some of the older laptops were not compatible with some of the WPA, which is the new wireless encryption, not new, but newer wireless encryption standard. But that's typically not a problem over the last five or six years. I think just about everything's WPA compatible. If you have a really old laptop, we're talking seven, eight years, it may not be able to connect to the newer wireless networks, but that's not always a problem because you could always use the old WEP encryption uh, on your uh, on your wireless router to uh, go back to the old way of doing things, and then all your computers should be able to connect to it. On our website, again, we have an article here under the uh, helpful article section on our website of all the different things. I can't cover them all here because of time, but uh, we'll talk about a couple of the more uh, common problems we see on wireless network troubleshooting. So... Uh, The first thing you want to do is check your internet connection. We here in uh, Central Florida are stuck with Bright House or AT&T. There's no other options here. So uh, Bright House provides the hardware for these things. And a lot of people have signed up for the full package where they get TV, telephone, and internet. And uh, the telephone and the internet, in a lot of cases, share the same transmitter. So... Uh, what you'll do is you'll call Bright House Technical Support, say, hey, my internet's down, and they'll go ahead and run a test. Oh, well, the line going to your house looks okay to us. We want you to reset your router. Um, In most cases, some of the routers just have a little plug on the back of it, and you can unplug it. However, if you do have the combined telephone service or one of the newer routers, you may have a backup battery. So unplugging it doesn't reset it because the battery will kick in once it loses power. And they do this so you don't lose your uh, phone service in the event of a power outage, which is a smart idea. So on Bright House's website um, and probably every other website, it shows you the model. You can click on it, and it shows you how to remove the battery. So once you unplug it and remove the battery, the device can then reset properly. And sometimes, uh, essentially, think of these little wireless routers or these routers as... Little computers, they're self-contained little computers. And once in a while, they kind of, through a power surge or bad logic or whatever, they just need to be turned off and turned back on again so they can reset whatever it is that they're doing internally. So a whole bunch of stuff, probably on your Internet Service Provider's website on how to take these batteries out and reset it if it has a battery. Again, if you don't have a battery, you just unplug it and... uh, It'll reset itself, and 9 out of 10 times that will take care of your Internet problem. Now, you'll know this. Most people have multiple wireless devices on their home networks. So if one of them works, that means your Internet connection is fine. But if uh, none, of, none of your devices, your cell phones, your smartphones, your iPads, your uh, smart TVs, if none of those can get online, then you know that you have an Internet connectivity problem, and it's time to talk to your Internet service provider. All right, so... The next thing we want to talk about is uh, restarting. If you do have a separate wireless router, a lot of people just have cable modems or DSL modems, and then they put their own wireless router in to uh, send that signal up to, theoretically, it's up to 255 devices, but in most of these devices, it's limited to 100 or less. Um, And it's not uncommon. I think we have 30 to 40 devices, last time I counted, on our wireless network at home. So it's not as uncommon as you think to get close to that 100 once you start talking about uh, smart devices. Uh, people are getting refrigerators that have Internet connections now and smartphones and iPads and smart TVs and this, that, security systems and the other things. So uh, the good news is most of these routers will natively handle up to 100 devices and uh, they'll probably do more once um, IP6 is fully uh, established. But. Uh, anyway, so we're looking at uh, these wireless routers, and this is the second thing you need to look at. If your wireless connectivity, if your Internet service provider is working and they say, hey, there's no problem with our lines, and you've installed your own wireless router, this is the second thing that you want to reset. And uh, they usually, it doesn't matter if it's Netgear, Linksys, Asus, uh, Belkin, 
D-Link, it doesn't matter. They all work the same way. They all pretty much have the same exact circuitry inside them. And similar to the wire, to the cable modem, they need to be preset. And there's usually a little power cord on the back of them, and you just yank it out, let it sit for 15 to 30 seconds, and then plug it back in. And then uh, it's probably good to reboot each of your devices so they get a new IP address, which is essentially your computer or device's wireless telephone number, so to speak. So once you've checked your ISP to make sure that that's working properly, you're going to check your wireless router if you have one of these. Again, a lot of the Internet service providers provide the wireless device as part of their service now that you rent from either your cable company or your phone company. And it's one of those all-in-one devices. But if this is separate... You definitely want to reboot this to check and see if that's the problem. So you reboot this, restart your device, you're still having a wireless connectivity problem. Well, it's time to look at the next step here. And again, you really need multiple devices in your house. If you just have one device, it's very, very difficult to troubleshoot that problem because it could be the device or it could be the router. It's a wireless communication. It's difficult to test without multiple devices. Um, all right, so we tested our, our cable modem or our DSL modem. We've reset our, uh, our wireless router, if we have one of those. The next thing it could be is the hardware inside your computer or wireless device. The good thing about computers, either desktops or laptops, they have these chips inside of them, which are wireless uh, transmitters and receivers. And once in a while, they do go bad. I had one go bad in my HP laptop after three months. And it was easy to replace. Just take the back off, pop another one in. I happen to have one laying around. But you can't buy them for 20 30 40 bucks uh, online, Amazon, or you can get them through the computer manufacturers. Bazillion sites you can get these things. Uh, make sure you've got the right one. You can match it up. The one I had to replace was this, uh, similar to this Intel network internal wireless card. Tiny little thing. Plugged it back in. My laptop was right back up. Again, I was able to check other devices, make sure my network was working. If you're afraid to open up your desktop or your laptop, the good news is they have these little network adapters. Actually, that's really cheap. $4.54 to get yourself a USB wireless adapter, which actually has surprisingly good range, uh, especially in the N-band. And you plug that into any available USB port on your desktop or laptop computer, and this will... It won't bypass, but it'll add another wireless receiver slash transmitter, and then you can continue to surf or do whatever it is you do on the Internet. So that's the third thing you're going to check. Now, if you're still having problems uh, connecting a certain device online, uh, it could be something to do with the antenna pattern. There's a bunch of things that happen in, without getting too technical in terms of wireless communication. There's interference, which is the number one baddie, and... Um, Basically, a lot of wireless devices can interfere with each other. Uh, we're talking cordless phones. We're even talking other normal appliances like refrigerators and microwave ovens. Something that's in the line of that communication between your device and that wireless router. It wasn't there before. Something that was recently replaced. Something that was turned off is now turned on. Um, the interference could interfere with your wireless connection. Usually you can just move to a different location and that interference problem is resolved. If that doesn't work, then you may be in what's known as a dead spot because all wireless transmitters are, they have some sort of directional properties to them. And uh, here on Cisco's website, you can look at uh, some of the directional uh, diagrams. It shows how these antennas, whether they're vertical or horizontal, how they transmit. And they have certain ways they can, if you look at this one here, they have certain directions. They're kind of directional in most cases. So if you're looking at these two little balls here and you're outside of that area, you're going to either lose or not be able to get a strong wireless signal. So you can resolve that by either getting an extender, which will amplify your uh, wireless signal, or you can actually physically turn your wireless router in a different direction, which will then move these patterns to a different location. And that may affect somebody else in your house or business who may now have spotty trouble connecting to the, uh, to the Internet uh, wireless router if you do move it. So keep that in mind. I have seen this, especially in larger houses where the wireless device is in one corner and then the bedroom or the office is in the opposite corner. Sometimes you just either need the hard wire or get a, an intermediate device or an amplifier or a repeater, so to speak, 
which will give you a little bit more range on the other side of the house if you're dealing with links. Those are the big ones, the more uh, obvious problems with wireless networks. Now, there are some like really strange idiosyncrasies where you'll have one device that just can't connect no matter what you do. And in that case, we recommend, and this works 99% of the time, we tell people just to reset your wireless network. Now, if you've got 20, 30 devices, it's a real pain in the butt to do this. But if it's important that you get this one device connected to your wireless network, if you're the guy or the woman paying the bill for the Internet service and your device is not connecting, well, heck with everybody else, man. You're the king. Reset that thing. And that is involved in resetting your wireless routers. It's called an SSID or uh, the, the wireless network name. So if your network's called Bob's Network, you want to change that to Bob's Network 2. Something that's materially different, even one digit off from the old SSID, so your computer and all your devices will think it's a brand new wireless network. And you also want to change that password, too. It's always good to change your password and flip that up, too, just so there's no confusion. You can't just change, and for whatever reason, I don't understand why this doesn't work, but if you just reset the password on your wireless network, all your devices are going to be confused, and it's sometimes difficult to find the place in your wireless device where you need to change that password. So rather than doing that, just wipe out the entire network and force everybody to reconnect. And again, 99 out of 100 times that miraculously works, assuming there's no hardware problems. Um, And the other thing we see are, well, the other two things is human error, as we're looking at down here. Um, Sometimes you do something called a finger fumble, and uh, you happen to hit a switch on your... um, on your laptop or your iPhone or whatever that turns your device into airplane mode or disables the antenna on your keyboard or the uh, wireless antenna. So once in a while that happens, usually on most laptops you can see a little lit up indicator that has a, a, it looks like a tower with a couple of antenna waves coming out the side of it. So make sure that's the right color. Some of the old Toshibas have the switch on the front or on the side of the laptop And uh, it's a little more difficult to do it on a phone. You have to actually click the airplane mode, but you may have just come back from a flight and forgot to turn your phone back on. Who knows? Human error happens all the time. And then the other issue could be that your computer is just fried with a virus, malware, or something that affected what's known as your TCP IP stack, which would pretty much prohibit you from connecting to any Internet, whether it's wired or wireless. Even if you do all that other stuff, troubleshoot everything, your computer just won't connect. So... At that point, you either want to do have a professional do a, a uh, malware removal, or you could reload Windows, which is kind of drastic. Remember to back up all your information first, because if you reload your computer, it will wipe everything out permanently. So You don't want to do that, so make sure you have a good backup plan. We do have a backup video on our website, so please subscribe and like, and thanks for watching. And uh, My name is Chuck Fresh, and I'm the PCGYN. Hope you figure out your wireless troubles today.